Welcome to another BRG Motorsports video. Today we're profiling Pete Castelli's 2017 Dodge Challenger with the four valve pent roof variable cam timing 3.6 liter motor. Today we're going to turn this 3.6 liter motor into a BRG beast using the RIP Supercharger Kit. This kit was specifically designed for this B6. We're going to go into some detail on how the kit was to work with and some feedback on the results this supercharger kit delivered. This is Nathan, one of our BRG techs, and he's the one that's putting this kit together. He started out by unboxing the RIP supercharger kit. Everything came in well packaged and very well documented. A really good start. Nathan started off with needing to get access to the front of the air conditioner, condenser, and radiator assembly. To do that, as you can see, he had to take the whole front end of the car off. Putting in the, uh, the RIP supercharger setup for the V6. And, uh, this is not a job for the faint of heart, as one can tell. Nathan? Yes, sir. Where's this thing go? Supercharger? Uh, no, the intercooler. Right there. That's a hell of an intercooler. Bar and plate. We're just going to leave it right on top, bolt it down. <laughs> a big ass hole through the hood. There we go. There we go. We're going to put a scoop on it. <laughs> Shit, they, they got them little. These are the uh, adapters? Yep. Well, ain't that cute. What do you think of the kit so far? It's pretty uh, detailed. I won't know until I start getting actually into what they require for the engine. That's going to be the fun part. It would be nice if they marked the bags better. Mark the bags better? Yep. Okay. I'm saying they supplied the bolts, but... Um, Finding the bolts that are supposed to go in here hasn't been fun. You know, I like the size of the intercooler. Well, it's a true bar and plate design instead of yeah. tube and fin. Yeah. Stay tuned. You think that bolt's a little short? Go ahead and install it. Way too short. Oh, good. That's undone. That's snug. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Let's get those a little bit longer. Yeah. They did the same thing into the top of the cooler. It's got this much room to screw into and they're not using it. Yeah. So we had to replace the mounting bolts for both the, both the outside brackets and for the inner cooler? Way too short for safety. What was that that you were saying about making the car longer? I am very curious to see how this is going to fit and get the plastic bumper to realign with the body because they just added an inch and a half, almost two inches to the front of the car. And I don't remember there being any room behind the plastic in the crash bumper. Well, I guess we'll find out. There was an offset between the lower bracket and the intercooler. We just simply made a bit longer of a lower bracket. Not a huge deal. Okay, at this point we've got the uh, intercooler mounted. Uh, we did have to change the bolts. And may or may not have been necessary. We thought it was, or actually Nathan thought it was. I didn't like how the intercooler was being pushed back and I had an opportunity to rub on that bracket right there. So we went ahead and made a couple of new lower brackets and brought it out further. And we're still kind of wondering about these spacers here. See what it's going to do with uh, the bumper fitment and stuff. But at this point Nathan is uh, putting in fuel injectors, uh, bigger ones of course. 
so far how things going, Nathan? Pretty smoothly. No real problems, just the modifications that we felt were necessary because of questions about how the kit was designed. But as far as the install process, everything's going pretty smoothly. Only other concern I have right now is this kit is designed for a stock intake and we have an aftermarket uh, air box on here from the k &M. So we'll find out if any further modifications are necessary when we get to that point. Okay. Okay. And I really don't even see it being that much difference on the link. I'm, uh, I'm not getting this. So using taller fuel injectors, so they supplied us with the spacer and a Home Depot grade uh, yeah, it's a wood sheet metal or yeah. wood screw. It's either wood or sheet metal. To replace the torques that used to be on there to gain well, let's maybe take, a quarter let's inch. Let's take it and put it in, in play and see what, what it's like. With the new screws? Yeah. I don't like using wood screws on it. I don't like to look at it at all. Grab the uh, the stock one. It is going into plastic. It is definitely going into plastic. I just don't like the look. Take that out. Take that one out. Put that one. Let's oh, no, see. Skipping the hot nab there any threads going in. That's probably why they extended it. Okay. This. This housing. This housing here. And this housing are, are identical. identical. Okay. Now. I think they just swapped it so it looks pretty and has their emblem on it. It's entirely possible. The only difference that they did is this is pointing the exact opposite direction of the stock. To make clearance for the supercharger, which is going to go there. Okay. Now the downside of this is... Now are you sure that this bolt pattern that's on that bracket isn't proprietary to one direction? Yes. Interesting. So my only concern at this point of this doing this mm -hmm. is it's a thermostat housing... Let's test this right now. It's a thermostat housing that holds the thermostat. So. Hopefully you can find a manufacturer, if the thermostat ever fails, that will sell you just a thermostat because otherwise you're going to be getting the wrong thermostat housing. Is there a part number? No, not really. That's not a part number? That's not a part number for a thermostat. It's not long enough. Okay. So. That's an interesting detail. Yeah. You said you can disassemble it. But most of the time, especially on these newer vehicles, they're selling the housing with thermostat all yeah. in one piece now. Well, that's what that one is. Well, it comes apart, but yeah. you're not going to get individual pieces. Yeah, most people aren't going to take their thermostat housing apart. Yeah. They're just going to replace the part. Yeah. So hopefully it's a good-looking CNC part. It is. Things are It's a little shallower than the uh, stock one, too. Well, that might be. They may have made that piece shorter to accommodate the, well, the, the I can't picture them doing just for that one thing just because it's got their name on it. I don't. The housing itself is taller. It's, you know, an eighth inch taller. I don't think yeah, that's going to do it, but we'll find out when we yeah. install the blower. Okay. Um, as you can see, this is, that one's half this yeah. on the inside. Okay. All right. Cool. How they're controlling some of the tuning um, by restricting the water flow. Mm -hmm. Restrict the water flow, you get uh, temperatures to rise faster, okay. to open the thermostat faster. That way, they don't have to alter the tuning as much. I'm, I'm not going to buy that. No, they changed a couple of, of the sensors for the, at the same time as we've done this too. Okay. So instead of trying to tune out the stock stuff, they've modified a bolt-in pattern mm -hmm. that allows less tuning to have to happen.
to make it California compliant. Okay. All right. So we shall continue. It comes with its own proprietary uh, upper radiator hose. That is where that's going to sit. Put the radiator back where it, uh, does the radiator have to go forward? And not according to anything in the instructions. <coughs> I think we've got 10 pounds of stuff going into a five pound bag. Well, it does look like the radiator is tilted forward in the picture. <laughs> so from the picture, I'd say it's angled about right there. Which is just gonna barely clear that supercharger. <laughs> it's gonna be tight. Well, I can see why they put those extensions on there. Yeah, right. No, I'm serious. The extension has nothing to do with the radiator support. Uh, I don't know about that. Because radiator if, support bolts here. And here. Yeah, but if you don't have the room to bend the, if you put your your intercooler. Oh, you're talking for the intercooler. Yes, I agree with. Yeah, but you also have to have the radiator bending way forward as well. I guess I actually need to put the uh, radiator support back in now. Uh, I would I would certainly mock it up before we go any further. Put the upper radiator hose in place. And uh, yeah, this is the uh, after of taking the upper radiator mount and had to cut in, cut that big divot out of it to fit something, which Very I guess much. we're going to find out right now. You think it's for the top of the radiator oh, yeah. fan shroud? Yeah. Mm. Interesting. What? Well, that's the rad support. Yeah, they push this radiator way forward. And those are the new supports? No, that's the stock support. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is probably what they're doing. too long so let me get through the book and find out <laughs> go to the instructions when all else fails so show me that again so to get the supercharger in here you have to cut one two off okay all right and that hose is going to be really close to the uh everything actually Okay. I think it's coming kind of through here, but I'm not paused yet. Well, it certainly makes a lot more sense. I still want to see how the bump and stuff lines up. Yeah. But so far, they've, they seem to have... Uh, they got some pretty close tolerances, yeah. but it fits. Yeah, 10 pounds of stuff in a 5-pound bag. Okay, so this stuff up underneath here that you cut out, that's where the the, fan, the upper radiator hose goes. No. Okay. That's where the air inlet goes. The air inlet goes. Got it. Okay. Cool. And this nicely made rip supercharger part that holds the thermostat and channels water is thinner and is necessary for the supercharger to fit far enough back to where all the belts and stuff line up. And we got a shot of the standoffs that hold the, the radiator away from the supercharger. And then the bracket that uh, we had to cut to get the hose. Oh, so what kind of cold air was that? Uh, that was cannon.
so you were able to sort out the uh, yeah. the hose routing and stuff. Yeah. Looks like it fits in there pretty good. That slot was cut enough. Which, yeah. Actually, didn't even have to cut it that far. Yeah. But if we do another one, we'll uh, we'll know. Well, here she is. We've got to put the front end back together now that we've confirmed that there's no leaks. This is sounds and it's looking good. We need to have to abandon the K&N cold air intake to make this fit work. But she is together and she is running. These are just some random shots of... Uh, putting the car back together and uh, getting it ready to put up on the dyno. Don't know if these will help um, putting it together. How how it looks for when we were uh, we doing it. So hopefully it helps you out. And, uh, I'm not having a bunch of dead air here on this long video. Okay, we found uh, we found a little problem here trying to put the front end on, and uh, Nathan discovered that there's an interference vet which he is now cutting out. Um, these tabs here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a green line on there. Um, those tabs hit right in the uh, intercooler. Now, no mention was made uh, in the instructions for this, uh, so I think uh, I think some updates on the, on the instructions are needed. Fortunately, it's a pretty easy mod with a pair of with a pair of ten snips. Could take a uh, exacto or uh, score it and break it. Okay, Ty, let's go ahead and lift this thing up, see if it fits. Okay, they didn't. Uh, they didn't make any mention about this bumper thing, and the problem that that I've had since you put these these spacers on is we lost this much room so how is this gonna we're gonna find how out how is this crush area gonna fit so we're gonna find out right here drum roll please Chad I think they could use your help. I think they could use your help. Oh, that's no, no. in the way? It is going to be in the way. That's what I figured. So we're going to take that off and leave it off. That's the bottom one, too. Um, the thing that bothers me of it is that it's not in the instruction. But honestly, after everything, it hasn't been a bad installation. Right now we've got about uh, 11, 12 hours into it. You know, we've made a couple of extra things. We're taking our time. And it's our first go. So. Yes. It's back on. Looks good. Uh, the only thing is... Um, we had to leave that out and leave that out. 
So that definitely doesn't fit without a lot of cutting to get back into the radiator. Um, and then this here definitely wouldn't fit. That's the crush zone for the bumper. How long did they manufacture sales potential? I believe 12, 8 to 12. They initially said six hours. I thought it was said six hours. Um, now where Nathan stopped and got the thing fired, we had 10 hours into it. He's got two hours uh, in it getting the front end figured out. And, and I figured you guys had about 14 hours um, Might be by the time everything is closed up and okay. zipped in. So uh, Chad's, Chad's thinking 14 might be a good guess uh, so if you're planning on doing this and you've never done one 14 15 hours to be careful about it and make sure that everything's right sure now if, you, if you've done you know 15 of these things you'd probably be able to do it in eight maybe six but, uh, full of plastic you got to make sure that all your parts <laughs> and stuff are, uh, are ready to go. We had to modify stuff that wasn't in the list. We had to make new bottom brackets because it wouldn't fit. Modify a bracket that was put on the condenser because it was in the way. You still have to put the, the interfender wheels on this? Yeah. Like I said, I was cautious of any of the clips that I didn't have to break. I didn't. If I had brand new clips, I would have popped everything out and been a lot faster getting everything out. And that uh, radiator support took almost three hours to cut. That was a that was a mission. Yeah. Now, what are we missing up There's on a top? Piece of plastic that... that's not out here right now. Okay, so it's still up in storage. Most likely. Okay. All right. Cool. There's a piece that goes. This is what the top looks like with the plastic in place so you know when you when you move the the intercooler out uh, or the supports out uh, almost or not the supports but when you bumper. move the uh, the bumper supports out almost two inches uh, something you know we, we all knew something was going to have to be left out and and that's the that's the guy right there so and then this guy as well. Nathan, can you pick this critter up? And, the diffuser? Yeah, the diffuser, radiator diffuser. Um, if we went through and, and cut it up, then there'd probably be, you know, maybe this much left of it. I think you'd have to cut um, all of this outer section out and just leave the inner housing, which isn't going to yeah, work very well. There, there, isn't, there isn't any point in putting it back in. It's not going to be doing its job, so uh, part of the lightning program. All right. The finished product, and Nathan being proud of himself. This is the first one, and I think it's the first one in the Bay Area. So uh, we're looking forward to getting it up on a dyno and uh, see what we can get out of this little V6. It's a cool freaking motor. Four, four valve pent roof. Uh, they also use them in Maseratis and Ferraris. Uh, variable cam timing. So, should be interesting. And that intercooler looks way cool. Later, this is all the parts that uh, that have been removed, replaced, modified, or ignored. So we put some brisk uh, spark plugs in, and uh, the uh, CNC work they did, that little replacement part that replaces that thermostat housing, it's a nice part. So, it's a new kit, uh, they've got a few, uh, few glitches, but uh, all in all, if uh, we can get the horsepower out of it, it's well worth it. Okay? Thanks guys. Now bids the question.
how much is enough horsepower to make this a worthwhile project? I'd say 120 horsepower over baseline is a damn good place to start. At the end of all this, here at BRG, our overall impression of the RIP Supercharger kit is extremely positive. There were a couple little glitches that we detailed in the video, but nothing that wasn't easily overcome. And the results speak for themselves. At 12 pounds of boost and 1200 degrees exhaust temperature at full throttle, this is a very well thought out and well orchestrated kit. And anybody that owns a Chrysler V6 should give hard thought to purchasing this kit. Even the plug and play tune worked very well. But Nathan was able to get a little bit more horsepower up on top. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this helps you decide and or install the kit. If you like this video, please like our page. We're always doing interesting and hopefully informative Absolute. videos Absolute like Absolute. this one. Yeah, Have a great yeah, day. They got the Hellcat. What's this? The Hell Kitty? Pretty much. <laughs> the kitten. <laughs> it's a Hell Kitty. Or Kitty from Hell. The Kitty from Hell. There you yeah. go. There you go. Yep. Awesome. That's a damn good job. Not bad for a bolt on.